Я бачу, що першим повинен виступити Масія. доктор Масія. Чого ми Масія? Да. Онлайн, онлайн. онлайн да. буде. Включення онлайн. Добре. Завідуючи відділу пластичної хірургії, начальник відділу відновлення грудей та лімфедеми у клініці Барселона, Іспанія. Так, чекаємо. Good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure to join in this um, online meeting that you organize in uh, Nipro. Nipro and Ukraine, um, the people who knows me uh, knows that is always in my heart. I really love the country and it's uh, very sad in that um, what is happening in the world. And it's very sad that uh, we cannot be all together in, in, um, in the same room and join of the Ukraine hospitality. But we need to be positive and I'm sure that very soon we can start traveling and coming and going back to Ukraine. Be positive and I'm sure that we can do. Okay, let's go to start about this um, lecture about breast reconstruction new standards. Uh, first, I have no disclosures. And the first thing that has changed in the last, you know, I can say it 50, nearly 50 years in breast reconstruction is that breast oncology is every time less and less aggressive. We can do now this kind of, you know, sparing mastectomies with immediate reconstruction, nipple sparring mastectomies, getting amazing results. And why we can do that? Because the mastectomies are more conservative with the same oncological results. Technology like the use of the ICG fluorescins and is helping us to check, you know, how are our skin flaps after the mastectomy, and then we can um, we can be sure that we are what we are going to put below the the mastectomy scars are fine. And then I am not going to talk about what is in the publications. I always like to talk about what has been my experience in one field and what I believe that the new standards are in breast reconstruction. There is no doubt that um, in this century, breast cancer treatment means more than treat a, a tumor. It means treat all the sequels in women and we own body, and, and that is to concept the minimal effective treatment and quality of life. We need to treat the amastia, the deformities, the therapy, the malapraxis, and the lymphedema. And the most important thing when you do something in breast reconstruction, and when you want to compare what is doing in, in Kiev or what is doing in Barcelona, what is doing in London, is why is different. And when you see there are many little things that can make this different, but the most important is the surgical experience. And you must remember that the, the, the surgery is, um, is important, but the, the opinion of the patient is also important as well. So when you see why we have a new paradigm in breast reconstruction is not only about the breast cancer, Therapy improvement is not about new anatomical concept and not about new technology. It's about these patients' information sourcing that they are changing, you know, our practice. Why? Because whatever you say to your patients, the patient after that, they go and check it to Dr. Google. And you can see that in just 10 years, we have moved from 1 million of you know, of spots of information in breast reconstruction to nearly 100 million, it means 100 times more. Why? Because, you know, our patients, they need more clear and honest information and they like to look for it. So when you see the goals in breast reconstruction, <clears throat> we need something more than volume. What we, we need is to create a natural and permanent breast. And this is why Breast reconstruction means not only volume, it means harmonic volume, shape, natural evolution, and the most important, self precession And all of this under this minimum mobility. So what we need to understand 
the breast reconstruction is we need, you know, knowledge in breast functionality, oncology, and aesthetic. This is the only way to make this aesthetic breast reconstruction. This is what our patients need. Regarding to the patient expectations, the patients, they have a lot of arguments in what, you know, they can need in, um, in this breast reconstruction. But the most important is not about self-esteem, it's not about sexuality, it's just more simple. They want to return to precancer state. And what does it mean? Simple. They need to feel free of disease and feel a real breast. And obviously in patients like this, they cannot feel not feel of, of a real breast and not feel free of disease because all this is current tissue is remembering the patient every moment about the breast cancer. So when they can go back to the daily routine and all this cell perception, patients, they can get results like this, that they are not bad. But when you ask a little bit more in that patients, they complain about, for example, skill coldness, succot anesthesia. And why is important to even to know that? Because we need to consider to provide the best because it's the only way to get, you know, patients in a good quality of life. Can you imagine what the people, they feel when they have these very poor results? And this is why, you know, implant reconstruction has some limitations, at least in the way that we did during many years until now. You need to remember that every woman are different, different shape, different cultures, different, you know, even position of the fat. And this is why you need to understand and you need to, to, um, to scan not only the body of the patient, you need to also to scan or to listen what the patients they, they need. And sometimes the patients, they need nothing. They can choose to be flat. Be flat is not a problem. If the patients choose this way when they know all the information about reconstruction. There are our techniques, you know, implant reconstruction, mainly the DTI, the direct implants, expanders, autologous tissue. We also try meshes, reverse expansion, all the things, because the only way to give up an opinion is if you can talk about and that is our main our main organic menu the abdominal flaps the lumbar flaps the gluteal flaps and the trocadorsal why this is the best kind of reconstruction obviously because it's the most similar tissue of of the body to the breast the same quality of fat the same quality of the skin and then you can recreate this kind of results if you do in the right way Obviously, even in patients that this, that 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 very skinny, when you do in the right way, you can get results like this. And sometimes you can do even without using the deep system. You can use only the superficial system, and this is one hundred percent like an aesthetic abdominoplasty. And then you see that the interpretive result is. Doesn't look perfect, but little by little, gravity gives the shape of the breast, and you can get this kind of results. Look at that lady. 20 years later, the breast is still is symmetric and is a good moving. But, but obviously, when the patient is quite skinny, you cannot get the same result. And then is when you need to look for some other. Um, some of the um, options like in this place, this lady with a kind of, you know, problem with an implant, extrusion, infection, and then the lady was a little bit skinny. You need to look for donor sites. And finally, we choose the lower abdomen combining the CA flap with the DF flap. And then you can get results like this that is not bad at all and the patient can be in the beach doing topless with any problem when we don't choose the abdomen when the patient has no abdomen or when the people they choose to another part and this is our second action the gluteal superior gluteal flaps 
in that case, you always need to put um, an interposition graph to make easy. But at the end, you can see that the donor side is not bad at all, and you can get a very nice result with this, you know, gluteal superior flap. When the people they have a little tissue on the back, you don't need to kill the muscle. You can get the teeth flap, all this skin and, and fat you can get with this vessel, and then you can do all this. You see, and the scar is on the on the bra area. Sometimes in, in patients that they have massive weight of loss, you know, massive weight loss, you can take all this, this tissue that, that is just below the arm and the axilla, and you can roll this and do all this reconstruction. Love handles, the lumbar area is another potential part of, for reconstruction. You see all these big vessels here, and then you can take all this tissue and make this kind of reconstruction. Obviously, in that patient, you need to put also another interposition graph to make easy. You, here you have another example. You see that the tissue is pretty similar to the mastectomy. And then you the scar, obviously, is not perfect, but it's not bad. And the result, you know, is good. TMG, personally, I don't like this, this flap because you need to kill the the muscle and i prefer don't use any kind of muscle and also because if you don't take care you can include some lymph nodes and create a lymph demand on our side all people all people they have the right to the be a reconstruction sometimes you have this kind of old ladies with a big asymmetry on the chest and then you can use from one breast to another breast like in that lady that she has osteomyelitis and you see this is the oldest system that some of the French, you know, plastic surgeon Bernil Lamorestein, at the beginning of the, the, the 20th century, they tried. And the concept is simple. Why we cannot do a breast from the other breast if the breast is free of disease? And this is what we make, you know, the, all the lower part of this huge breast. It was used to do a contralateral breast. And that is the result two weeks after and this is the result six months later. Obviously, that lady, we needed to make more than a breast. It was a thorax reconstruction, but it's good. But you can do the same, you know, and when you need only to do a breast, and you can see here all this tissue, you move, and you transfer all this with this rotational perforator flap, and then you can get from one side and do this kind of breast in a very simple way. Breast neurotization, this is something that we are trying. We are doing more in the reconstruction. It helps, and I can tell you that now, you know, in immediate reconstruction, you can get nearly in above 70% good sensation, pain, heat, and everything. And in delay reconstruction, you can get about over 50%. That is very good also. We are even trying to do this kind of Nipple, you know, rain innervation that this is more difficult and you can try to do only in, in prophylactic mastectomies. So there are women from all kinds of women and all kinds of, of results. And then what we need to know is we need to understand better and better what our patients they, they need. And we are the first because sometimes you can see that there are patients they are afraid to use implants after the PAP scandal, Silimed, the, the BICL, and now more recently the people start to say that breast illness. So we need to change also the approach on the implant reconstruction. Why? Because we don't need to kill the muscle because we can get the same result without killing the muscle and then we can reduce the pain, the, the animation deformity, and even the acrocomial discomfort. So we can avoid all this kind of you know bad results because this is affecting this self precession that we talked at the beginning. The cleavage self precession is the most important thing, and this is what our patients need. Look at this patient, for example, it's not a bad result with implant, but when you see the patient was complaining about the, all these kind of wrinkles and a strange movement, and then if you put the 
the implants per pectoral and you put some fat grafting, you can get that kind of results. Fat grafting is extremely easy and useful, especially for little partial breast reconstruction and also for some kind, you know, of refinement. At the end, the most important thing is combining. And this is why nowadays the, the I think that the, the latest trend is to to provide the best of the world, boss world, you know, is fat plus, you know, implants or little flaps plus implants, especially in thin ladies. And it, this is the way to get the most natural result with minimal morbidity. And then you can see like this, this kind of um, prophylactic mastectomies, DTI with a very nice result or combine a small teeth up, lick a flap plus implant and get this kind of results or do something like this a woman that already has implants and we have she had um, breast cancer behind the nipple you can just do a little skip flap to make at the same time the nipple with this skip flap remove the the tumor that is behind the nipple areola keep the the, the implant and do this reconstruction or oh, like this lady that she we did 20 years ago or 25, you know, a, a DIP flap, the lady was happy with the result, but, you know, she came a few a few um, years later because she wanted more volume. And then you can treat this lady like a normal lady and do a breast enlargement. So this is all this kind of potential, you know, um, techniques that you can use in breast reconstruction. We can solve this kind of disasters when the people, they make a kind of DAP without considering that the lady was too thin. They fail in a, in a latissimus dorsi, they fail in expander. And then obviously what you need to do is a contralateral, in that case, latissimus dorsi with the skin islands, put an expander and put a lot of, you know, um, fat grafting and little by little you can improve and get these results. But you can avoid all these problems doing a good planification. In summary, and just to, to finish, the most important thing is choose the best technique for every patient. I think is in a skinny patient, you need to, to use this kind of hybrid breast reconstruction. Obviously, in, in a fat women, when you have a skin flaps, you can use, you know, the perfect flaps that like I show you. But the most important thing, again, is education. And this is why we need to provide all these informations through obviously internet, but also making some kind of meetings only for patients to try to motivate it. Just summary, looking for less morbidity, looking for more image reconstruction and oncoplasty, and looking for the perfect material. And individualized treatment. Every woman are different, and we need to look for the best for everyone. And the organic and, and fresh local products are the best. And we will see what is in the future. Probably if we can kill, you know, and control the, the cancer, we you know we are not going to need breast reconstruction. But at the moment, this is what we are doing in Barcelona. And I hope very soon we can meet all together again in Barcelona or in Dnipro or in Kiev or in Kharkiv and going back to the normality and enjoying of this wonderful country that the uh, Ukrainian Honestly, for me, is one of the best places in the world. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you soon in person. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure. Я не вперше слухаю професора Масію, завжди захоплююсь його доповіддю, як за змістом, так і формою. Я знаю, що професор Масія бував у Дніпрі. Він є великим е, другом дніпровських онкологів, які багато чого в нього навчились. Олег Серенков, ви це ваш вчитель? Так, да, добрий день, дякую колеги. Професор Масія, да, це наш большой друг, не тільки наш, він любить, як ви вже бачите, всю Україну, йому подобається ця країна ментально. Она ему близка, несмотря на то, что он живет далеко, и наши люди, и наши доктора. И поэтому он много тратит времени на то, чтобы 
улучшить качество медицинской помощи, имеется в виду в части реконструктивной хирургии здесь у нас в Украине. Он много раз, как, ну вы все прекрасно знаете, он много раз был здесь у нас в Днепре, он делает операции, он помогает нашим пациентам. И самое главное, он вкладывает он свой ресурс, а именно время да, в наших докторов, он дает возможность Поделить, он делится этими знаниями. И вот та презентация, которую сейчас вы все видели, он записал сегодня, ну, вернее, вчера ночью, специально для вот Ольги Ивановны, для всех, для нас, находясь в больнице. Он заболел гриппом там каким-то сложным, как оказалось, и не выходил долго на связь, но не потому, что он не хотел, а потому, что он действительно болел. Но, тем не менее, он нашел в себе силы, потому что для него это важно. И сама презентация, как всегда, воспринимается очень легко, она такая, визуальный ряд очень нарядный, показательный. И вы видите, насколько шире смотрит профессор на проблему реконструкции. То есть он использует человеческое тело как ну вот, органическое меню. Да. Он не любит эти импланты, он об этом заявляет и говорит, но все равно от них, к сожалению, пока не можем мы уйти, может быть, в будущем что-то и появится. Появится. Но все равно это такой процесс непрерывный, который все время двигается вперед. И вот мы сейчас смотрим эту презентацию. Для меня лично, хотя я это все давно вижу и участвую даже в этих всех моментах, но все равно волосы встают как бы дыбом, и мурашки идут от результатов, да, насколько красиво получается, насколько естественно и натурально. Вот, поэтому это все, ради чего, собственно, мы здесь сегодня и собрались. И Ольга Ивановна, и Алексей Алексеевич. Давным-давно знаем профессора за его э, труды, которые мы видим, за его публикации, которые постоянно э, во всех э, ресурсах, э, он, ну, он очень активный и продуктивный, он много пишет. И он не боится нового, не боится нового, он как инноватор. У него возникают новые идеи, он идет их реализует, он пробует, он старается, да, он ошибается, но тем не менее он все время в движении. Поэтому вот я хочу, чтобы это все передалось и нам с вами, и мы как бы э, были с ним, э, двигались в одном направлении и разделяли эту философию. Я тоже хочу сказать буквально два слова. Ну, по-перше, подяка профессору Масії за підтримку, яку він нам надає, і за відданість. Відданість нам, українцям, він дуже співчуває Україні, я знаю, яку допомогу він надає. І також він великий генератор ідей. А враховуючи те, що у нас багато молодих спеціалістів, ми розвиваємо нашу малу, патологію молочної залози як розвиток нашого закладу. І я дуже йому вдячна, те, що він навчає, те, що він ділиться своїми ідеями. Це дуже добре. На здоров'я, виздоравлюйте, наш дорогий професор, ми вас ждемо в гості.